Joining us now is OGOP with stories trending around the world. Hello, Jeanette. Good morning, Dr. Vati. How, How are you this weekend? It was excellent. How was yours? Great. Great. Tundu, good, good morning. morning. How are you this morning? Good. How are Great. you? Great. I'm fantastic. Good morning, Rafai. Jinika. <laughs> no, no, it's Jinix. Jinika. <laughs> all right. Well, all right. We learn every day, right? <laughs> Good morning to you viewers. Here are some of the stories that are trending across the globe. In the United States, former President Donald Trump blasted President Joe Biden over the weekend in front of an impassioned crowd in South Carolina, berating Biden's failed handling of Ukraine and other foreign conflicts. Trump called him a physically and mentally challenged leader who has inflicted more damage during his tenure than five worst presidents in U.S. history combined. The problem is not that Putin is smart, which of course he's smart, but the real problem is that our leaders are dumb. <laughs> dumb. In Saudi Arabia, the government over the weekend executed 81 people convicted of crimes ranging from killings to belonging to militant groups. The largest known mass execution carried out in the kingdom in its modern history. The number of executed surpassed even the toll of a January 1980 mass execution for the 63 militants convicted of seizing the Grand Mosque in Mecca in 1979. The worst ever militant attack to target the kingdom and Islam's holiest site. Under sports, seven-time Super Bowl winning quarterback Tom Brady abruptly ended his brief retirement on Sunday by announcing his return to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers for a 23rd NFL season just six weeks after hanging up his cleats. Brady, who had established himself as one of the greatest players in league history, stunned the spotting wall with the unexpected news. Honor Entertainment, Brent Renault, an acclaimed filmmaker who traveled to some of the darkest and most dangerous corners of the world for documentaries that transported audiences to little known places of suffering, was killed on Sunday after Russian forces opened fire on his vehicle in Ukraine. Renard was from Little Rock, Arkansas, and was one of the most respected independent producers of his era. He won an Alpha DuPont Columbia University Journalism Award for Arming the Mexican Cartels, a documentary on how guns trafficked from the United States fueled rampant drug gang violence. He was 50 years old. Finally, the British Academy Film Awards returned on Sunday with a live black tie ceremony after a pandemic curtailed event in 2021. New Zealand filmmaker Jane Campion was named Best Director for The Power of the Dog, becoming only the third woman to win the prize in the awards' seven-decade history. The chairman of the awards ceremony, Krishnendu Majumda, opened the show hosted by Australian actor and comedian Rebel Wilson with a message of support for Ukraine. Well, let's begin what's trending. Over the weekend, the governor of Brevis State, Yisam Wike, described Philip Shaibu, the Edo State Deputy Governor, as an ingrate for threatening to leave the People's Democratic Party. In a video that is now making the rounds on social media, Wike said the PDP gave Godwin Abaseki and Shwaibu the party's ticket when they were denied the same by the All Progressives Congress during the 2020 state election. Well, let's take a listen before we come back for a discussion. This is the same thing that people want that they were kneeling down to beg for us to give them umbrella. Today, you have the F country to take dignity. Such a shame. These are the same people. When they were denied ticket on my APC, they were only held as tether, begging everybody to give them umbrella, and we gave them umbrella. We went and measured the fact that they won that election. Today, that deputy governor will be ranting, a deputy governor, who come out on television to tell PDP the authorities. I have written to the national chairman of the party. If they don't consider this party committee against the deputy governor, I will invoke the sections of the party, and I will measure the most discipline of the deputy governor. He said, 
And he lost his election and local government who were in the door. He lost. And he will come out on television to threaten the party, the alternative. A deputy governor is wearing khaki. Look at him. Look at him. I, I have never seen anything like this in my life. This is the first time I can see a deputy governor come out on the television to tell the party if you don't do this. Who is the father? Well, in another development, the All Progressives Congress in Ebony State slammed Governor Wike over his outburst against Governor David Umahi's defection. The APC described his statements as reckless and an affront on the judiciary. Well, last week, Governor Wike alleged that he was the one force behind the ruling of an Abuja High Court, which ordered for the sack of Umahi and his deputy from office for defecting to the APC from the People's Democratic Party. VK has been trending for like for the whole weekend. You know, the, um, the chairman in uh, Eboin State, the APC guy, called him a primitive man. He said to him, you have to just go and mind your business. Why are you like attacking everyone from, you know, <laughs> Philip Shoaibu to the Eboin State governor? But there was another development that even came up over the weekend, the PDP had announced one um, Iduma, I believe, um, to become the new governor. And there was an unconfirmed report that he has now become a social media, if you can pull up that tweet, a social media governor. That's the tweet that, you know, I mean, it's not confirmed yet, but basically he's now ruling on Facebook and Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that tweet is hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> he starts himself and resumes work on Facebook yeah, and Twitter. That's, so that's actually very funny. Yeah. Good job there, whoever wrote that to. But yeah, we talked about Governor Wiki earlier, and for me, I think it's within his right to take exception to any member of PDP going to the press and saying that they might leave the party. If that offends him, he's allowed to be offended. Where I personally draw the line, and my personal preference, is insulting people. Yeah. There's no need for that old khaki talking about how he's dressed. But that's, that's his style. It's <laughs> yeah. Remember it's when he told the man with the crown, who's like Fo Usman Dan Fodio because mm. of his crown. That's yeah. his style. And also um, talking about people's parentage is completely, you know, beyond the pale as far as I'm concerned. And it's similar, as you mentioned, um, the Ebony governor, Devon Mahi, talking about people's generations. Can we just leave people's families out of it? I really think that is bullying, which is what Governor Baseki accused Governor Wike of doing in his, you know, really strong repost there. And that, that's really unacceptable. It's mm. fine if you don't want people, you know, lambasting your party. But what um, I think Deputy Governor Philip Schreiber was actually calling for was more inclusivity. If Governor Wike does not like the way he approached it, that's fine. It's within his rights, but not to insult people. No, mm. I don't think that's ever necessary. Yeah, we're mm. going to hear more of this. It's the political season, right? I mean, it's the political like... season, and it keeps throwing everything like a cluster bomb. That's just it. You know, once you throw a cluster <laughs> bomb, it comes out in clusters and it's everywhere. I think politicians should have more decency and decorum. You can't be telling another man who is your father. You can't even tell a child that in the first place. No. What has that you got can't. to do you with it? Can't, you can't it's tell a child that. Yeah. What he has done or what he has said is unacceptable. And you can't keep thinking he has the monopoly of abuse. Because that's what I did to a traditional ruler. The case of Usman Danfodio. He abuses everybody. This is not fair. Mm. This is not good. Mm. Another thing, story that you brought up that you said, he said he was the singular force behind that yeah, judgment. Yeah, he was one of the first. I don't think he should have said that to no, Well, he, the he, NBA should also caution yes, him. Because the no, but he's saying so, he's, not a, he's not afraid. He's not so ashamed of that. So what he's saying is that he's become law and judgment mm -hmm. in this country. Yeah, I wonder what the NBA has to say Then Nigeria is in trouble. Mm -hmm. If a person is saying I'm the one that influenced a high court judgment. Imagine. The last time I checked, he has a state to run. The state still has 43% unemployment rates. Although you can argue to the high levels that fly over is creating jobs and all of that. But the question is, the people of River State, they are dying of suits. He's trying to solve the problem, giving commendation for that. But suit is still a big problem. The state has 43% unemployment rate. The state has high level of insecurity. I think these are enough problems to keep him busy. That's what everyone Rather saying. than throwing all these thermobaric bombs everywhere. Ah, you're fine. But when he does good, he has done good. He has done some infrastructure, but he should face his state. Dr. Well, Bati. I think uh, Governor Obaseki uh, of Edo State summarized it when he deplored the tendency to become a political bully 
for the political overlord. And he used the opportunity of the statement he put out in the papers today. One, to support his deputy, uh, claiming that his deputy is right for saying that those of them who move from the APC to PDP in Edo State have not been properly integrated. He even mentioned the name of a certain chief, Danobi, who is not allowing that proper uh, integration. Then second, he pointed out that uh, Governor Wiki has this habit of bullying everybody. And uh, the new one now is that uh, he, he claims that he also bullied a court of law. As a man who is a lawyer, you know, he may have to clarify that. And uh, not to say it was one of the forces that, uh, you know, uh, encouraged the Federal High Court, the Court of Justice High Court, to arrive at a particular ruling in a particular case. Okay, a force. Okay, did he sponsor the lawyers? Uh, did he supply the legal team against, uh, against uh, Umai. Uh, Umai? But, you know, maybe it's a phrasing of it because he himself knows, you know, that uh, that would be quite... Uh, Contemptors. And in fact, the governor of uh, Edo State used the word about the delusion of grandeur. You know, and he made the point that, look, this strong man syndrome in political parties is to be deplored because we should be more interested in building institutions. And I thought that was a very good point. And uh, Governor Baseki is saying that nobody can buy Edo State in case uh, uh, Governor Wiki is interested in, uh, in the presidential race. He should be reminded that he has a reputation for dealing with political bullies and high-handed political leaders. Of course, the uh, mm. reference is very clear. Mm. Oh, yes. As for the traditional rulers that we refer to, <laughs> Dr. Matthias. the Council of Traditional Rulers in uh, River State, you know, members of that council have been bullied more than once by mm. Governor Wiki. First, he said if they, do, well, they did not attend meetings, if he summoned them, that he would remove them. <laughs> At that same meeting, there was one traditional ruler who was shaking his head. <laughs> he attacked me and said, you, you, that's, that's how you go about shaking your head. <laughs> so it looks like Gono Wiki, you know, is uh, no, he's very not, aggressive. He's not, he's not uh, and uh, maybe he just needs to, uh, you know, apply the brakes a bit. Uh, the rumor is that, well, he funds the party, uh, but uh, Gono Obaseki has reminded me that he does not own the party that's because right. everybody there is an equal stakeholder. Now, as for the other man, uh, Idoma Enwo, mm -hmm. who is now a Facebook governor. Well, he should know that, yes, the political party um, led by um, uh, Dr. Yochi Ayu may have, in response to the uh, case in uh, the Ebonye case, immediately said, oh, this will be our candidates for the election yes. that has been mm -hmm. ordered, the re-election that has been ordered by the court. Now, he should know, a man who wants to be governor, you know that there is due process. You don't become governor on uh, Facebook because I hear he's been calling himself His Excellency <laughs> on, oh, no. on Facebook. Oh, no. So yes. that's not how to become a governor. And in any case, the, the, the matter is on appeal. Yeah. And until the matter is finally determined. And Wiki has said that the PDP will fight that matter all the way to the mm. Supreme Court. Mm. Well, so let nobody be uh, going about. Again, you see delusion. You know? Delusion. So maybe delusion. tomorrow, don't be surprised if. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Some other people show up on Twitter and Facebook and call themselves uh, His Excellency, Our Excellency. Oh, by <laughs> themselves. <laughs> What's <laughs> that, guys? As for today, His Excellency should call all of us. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no, we're, we're on live television. We're not on Twitter. We're not on social media. <laughs> well, all right. We'll take another story. The Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice, Abu Bakr Malami, has clarified his stance on the investigation of Abba Kiari, the suspended Deputy Commissioner of Police, over his case of alleged money laundering. In a report dated February 4th, the AGF had said that there was no sufficient evidence that Kiari was involved in money laundering. The report, which circulated online over the weekend, fueled speculations that Malami was trying to exonerate Kiari. However, in a statement on Sunday, Malami, through his spokesperson, Uma Gwandu, said the office of the AGF requested a further probe in relation to some aspects of the investigation. Well, in July 2021, the Federal Bureau of Investigation revealed how Kiari allegedly collaborated with Hush Puppy, a self-confessed international fraudster, to arrest another fraudster after a dispute over a $1.1 million scam. Well, it's great that he has uh, uh, clarified this. He came under fire at Rufai 
um, on Twitter yes, came, uh, over uh, the weekend and, because and was, people were saying, why is he yeah, the one investigating? And it was good he clarified it. And I, and I see the concerns of a lot of people yeah. because this case is a very, very important one yeah. because of who Abakiari used to be to all of us. And I keep saying this is the same... If not, and Nigeria doesn't have superhero stories, but if this was, if we were to have like a superhero story, like a super cop story, it will be Abakiari. Yes. And only to think that all of this was going on, I think it was a big, big, you know, indictment on the police force to start with. When the case is and, over, I hope a movie yeah, comes out of it. And, because and I mean, a it big, is. big indictment on our systems. And I keep saying it goes back to our systems. Mm. Because there is no how that reports will not have been made to the police force about some of his activities and some people will sweep it under the carpet until he became a national disgrace. And at first they had to signal us from America. Mm. Then it took another NDLA that was strong enough under a new leadership to be able to nail him finally. So this is going on. Let's see how this pans out. He'll have his time in court. You know, the extradition process will go uh, on, we're looking at that, but I'm happy he's cleared himself. And a lot of people are watching. This case must be pursued to a logical conclusion. The investigation must be done thoroughly. Because apart from these two cases, there are some other cases against him already. Now people are now coming forward to speak against him and put cases and allegations forward. So too many, in fact, even in relation to how people were brutalized during the protests, there are so many cases against him. It's, it, just, it just shows that he's in for a tough time. A very, very tough time. So I'm happy. Everybody's watching. Yeah. Everybody's watching. The world is watching. Hot case. <laughs> I think the clarification it's, is yeah, important. It's an order, yeah. And it is adequate. Mm. Okay? Because what Umar Gandhi pointed out is that there has been a misunderstanding yes. of the position of the Office of the Attorney General. And that specifically, what the Office of the Attorney General has uh, advised is that, look, there should be further investigation in order to cover the field. Now, if we dial back, you recall that when the report from FBI and the indictment by the court was uh, reported, the Inspector General of Police set up a committee. Now, it was that committee, four-man committee, that the Inspector General of Police set up that said, for example, you know, um, they couldn't really establish certain things and it should just be demoted. Uh, there was no proof yeah, of, uh, you know, uh, the officer being involved in uh, money laundering. And when the report was sent to the Office of the Attorney General for advice, the Office of the Attorney General wrote back to the Inspector General of Police that the investigation was inadequate because a prima facie case of money laundering, that was the expression that the Office yes. of the Attorney General used, been had been established yeah. against uh, Supercop uh, Abakiari. And then, of course, the Inspector General of Police, acting on that, now set up another panel, okay, to uh, continue with the investigation. So maybe that panel has also submitted this report. And as uh, Uma Gwandu was trying to clarify, you know, the Office of the Attorney General probably wants more investigation a second time. Now, you will recall that this same Office of the Attorney General of the Federation had pointed out that the federal government was going to initiate extradition processes against Abakiari. And you know, as I said, the jurisdiction for kickstarting that is not an automatic executive thing. It has to start at the federal high court. And the country that is to extradite will first of all determine whether there is actually uh, a solid case or not. But people are bound to re uh, react emotionally uh, because of the uh, you know, sensitive nature of the case. Right. And the fact that the same super cop has now been uh, also indicted uh, by the Nigerian Drug Law Enforcement Agency. At a time, he was supposed to be on suspension, okay? And they've reported his involvement uh, in some drug-related things. And now also certain accounts have been uh, identified in which it is said that this same cop and some of his uh, supporters have in their possession up to about 4.2 billion naira. How much is the salary of a... Uh, of, uh, you know, a police officer within the Nigerian police force. So these are some of the dimensions to it. Mm -hmm. uh, so the public would continue to be interested yes. uh, in this particular case and probably, you know, other related matters. Yeah, Tindra Abiola has come to you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to say
say that we have had a super cop before in this country, yeah. even bigger profile than Abakiari, and he ended up in jail. So these heroes inevitably have feet of clay. At mm -hmm. the end of the day, they're just people. Like yeah. You and I, like everybody else. Absolutely. Everybody has their little that's, excesses. That's perfect, it's just that, I, well, I'm trying to be discreet here. Before. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just that some people have their, their excesses, mm -hmm. their foibles take a criminal bent. Yeah. And I think people are reacting to the story in the way they are because of the massive trust deficit. Yeah. People's trust has been abused so badly in this country that we have come to believe the very worst. Mm -hmm. And we have come to believe that if you have the right backing or if you're from the right tribe or whatever people want to call it, then you can get away with blue murder in this yeah. country. And it will be a shame if that's proved to be true. I still remain hopeful that it will not, because I don't tend to um, jump to the worst conclusion No, possible. you're so sweet. I give the benefit of the doubt to everybody. So let's see how it all pans out. All right. We shall take our final story. Ugochuku Ekwem, the general overseer of Christ Living Hope Church, has been trending after news broke out that he was arrested by the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency for smuggling 54 sticks of cannabis that were found wrapped around his body. The spokesperson for the NDLA said the pastor was apprehended at the Lagos Malta Mohammed International Airport on March 7th while on his way to Kenya for a three-week-long crusade. The pastor has been quite popular only to his preaching techniques, especially during deliverance. Let's take a quick look at one of his crusades. Stand up, stand up, stand up, stand up, stand up, all of you, stand up, all of you. Give me your hands, all of you. Come, 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 run to me, take it. Jesus. Uh, uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Wow! <laughs> Goodbye, I can't help you. <laughs> I can't help you. What, what, what would Jesus you call that Christ. deliverance method? Weed. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's the weed method. It's, it's weeding out the spirits. <laughs> it's, it's weeding out every spirit. Wow! Ha. We're in the end time, so. We are in the end times, so oh, Jesus Christ, Pastor D O, touch not my anointed. Touch not my anointed. See, you see, and that's the problem. Please, if you want to do your cannabis business, do it. Don't bring the church into it, <sighs> Pastor. This is not what the body of Christ is about. Please, and I, I, I just want to say this: it is this pastor that is a fraudulent cannabis peddler. The body of Christ is not like this. Please. Wrapped around his body. Wrapped around his waist. Sticks. And he was going for crusade. Does he want inspiration? Is the Holy Ghost not enough for him? Please, that's not how the body of Christ is. It is that man that has <laughs> oh a problem. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Dr. Bati, please, quickly. Well, your I mean, the thing this. about uh, many of these churches of the Pentecostal variety that I always point out is that the buyer should beware. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, uh, many people who go to churches, they've turned these pastors into mini gods. And increasingly, just like the same heroes that Tunun talked about, we've seen that many of these people have the feet of clay. It's either, you know, pastors have been reported to be involved in uh, marital, uh, you know, uh, cases of cockadry, or they are raping members of the church, or they are misleading people. This is a very height of it to find that a particular uh, uh, pastor. Christ Living Hope Church, uh, with headquarters in Anambra, yes. you know, is uh, found uh, at the airport uh, as a drug uh, smuggler, as a drug uh, peddler. Uh, maybe perhaps it takes a quantum of oh sin, my goodness. you know, to be able to have, uh, you know, some form of illuminations. Because that particular scene that was shown in church uh, was quite chaotic, was quite uh, riotous. In fact, you may use the word aggressive and violent. Oh my God. Uh, you know, which is a, an unusual mode of worshipping God. <laughs> Finally, I think that the NDLA should be commended. Over the weekend, it was yes, not the only one the only that was one. apprehended. Right. And we've seen uh, some kind of renewed dynamism since uh, General uh, Mohamed Buba Marwa uh, took over the uh, leadership at the uh, Nigerian Drug Law Enforcement Agency. So it's just a reminder mm -hmm. to pastors or plebeians or whoever 
that there is a new sheriff yeah. in, in charge of the drug law. I take drug, care. Yeah. Drug law, yeah. Buyer, beware. Unfortunately, that's all we have. Well, Did you I want just to say want to something? Say quickly, quick yes. thing. Um, Jane Austen says it is, she says it is, I believe, will be found everywhere that the clergy are or are not as they ought to be, just as the rest of society. Some pride and prejudice. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yes. Pride and prejudice. Well, all right. Well, thank you very much. Thank you all uh, for your you know, great Virginica. analysis as always. Thank you. <laughs> well, that's all I have for you on what's uh, trending today. I'll see you all tomorrow.